Welcome to the Membership Guys podcast. Kick-ass advice and tips for membership site owners. Hey guys, welcome to episode 211 of the Membership Guys podcast. I'm your host, Mike Morrison, one half of the Membership Guys. Thank you so much for joining me this week. You are in the right place if you are looking for tips and advice on growing your membership business. Okay, so on last week's episode, we talked a lot about whether or not the membership industry is a long-term, viable, sustainable business model, or whether it's a passing fad, a bubble that's about to burst. And while I hopefully put your mind at rest that memberships aren't going anywhere soon, they're here for the long term, and if anything, they're just going to become more and more commonplace as a business model, we have to look at the consumer side of things as well, because there's definitely a downside to memberships becoming a more utilized business model, particularly subscriptions. So as more and more people move into the membership space and more companies are starting memberships, consumers now have an overwhelming amount of choice. Streaming services, music subscriptions, subscription boxes for everything from beauty products to underwear, socks, SaaS software subscriptions, and of course, online memberships with e-learning and community. It can all add up. And all of this can lead to what's being called subscription fatigue. People are getting fed up and overwhelmed with needing to juggle a countless array of subscriptions for a whole bunch of different services and products. Myself, I've got about seven different subscriptions just for TV and movies. Now, not everyone is that geeky or that extreme, but you know, many people aren't too far off. And while membership sites generally aren't the biggest culprit when it comes to subscription fatigue, they are definitely in the crosshairs when your members finally have enough of juggling their Netflix, Spotify, Amazon Video, and all the other monthly subscriptions they're paying, and then decide to do a clear out of anything that they consider non-essential. So how do you end up avoiding on the scrap heap as a result of subscription fatigue? Here are some of my top tips. First thing you need to do is make sure you're taking steps to personalize your member experience. More and more businesses are becoming increasingly automated, and that can result in customers feeling detached from that business's products or services. When you don't feel any attachment whatsoever to something, it's far easier to cast it aside. We are big advocates for adding a personal touch to your membership wherever you can, working it into your member experience, whether it's by connecting with your members directly inside your community and actually showing up and having a presence there. Maybe it's providing some sort of coaching element where people can interact with you personally, or even just sending private personal welcome videos to every new member joining your site. Anything which makes their relationship with you and your membership have more of a personal connection will make the decision to end their subscription much harder when they're evaluating their expenses, particularly when they're comparing to other subscription products they're paying for that doesn't have that personal connection element to it. So take steps to personalize your member experience. Second thing you can do is consider combining subscription products. So if you have multiple memberships or multiple different subscription products in your business, you might consider bundling bundling them into a single membership. So people are paying a single subscription for access to two or three core things that otherwise they would have been paying separately for. So maybe that one subscription gives them access to your membership, gives them access to your SaaS product, or maybe it's an app or a tool or software that they'd normally have to pay a separate license for. Maybe it's a book club or just something like that. Anything else that people would need to make a regular subscription payment for. If you bring them all together under a single product, a single payment, a single subscription, then that can make it far more likely that you'll avoid the chop when someone's reevaluating the services they're paying for. This is something that Amazon do very, very well. You pay one single subscription for Amazon Prime, that gives you access to their video streaming service, gives you access to their premium delivery, the Prime at Home service, gives you access to music and a whole bunch of things that were previously all separate products. Many other big hitters are moving in the same direction to consolidating multiple subscriptions into one in the aims of avoiding the chop when people are 
battling subscription fatigue. This also stacks your value proposition to a point where your product just becomes far too valuable to cancel. And so if someone's not using everything that you offer, they're less likely to end their subscription because it means they have no other way of getting the thing that they are using and the thing that is really valuable to them. And it also means when people are listing out all the subscriptions they pay for, you're just a single entry rather than taking up half of the list. So if you have multiple subscription products in your business, consider combining them all into a single product. Something else to consider is introducing a lower price tier or bringing in multiple pricing tiers. So could you create a low end tier that gives people just the basics of your membership for a fraction of your regular subscription fee? Maybe they only get the community or maybe they just get a certain amount of content. Then you could give members the ability to downgrade their membership if they're finding that they're overwhelmed with all the different subscriptions they're paying for and they'd consider canceling yours. If they can downgrade it for a lower cost and a reduced amount of functionality or features, then that might be more attractive to them than cancelling entirely. And it keeps them in your ecosystem, making it far more likely that they may return back to the regular subscription level later on once they've cleared out some of their other payments. Now, this won't be suitable to every membership. It very much does depend on what it is that you offer, but it can certainly help in some situations where affordability might make the decision to cut your membership easier if someone is cleaning house. Similar to having downgrade options, giving members the ability to put their account on pause temporarily can be a much better alternative to losing them completely. Again, this can help ease members' subscription fatigue without them disappearing forever. So that's the fourth tip there, giving members the ability to pause their account rather than having to cancel it. And that obviously means that for whatever period they're on pause, they either don't pay anything or we see in some cases people have essentially an account maintenance fee. So rather than paying $50 a month, they can put their account on hold and pay $5 a month essentially to avoid their account being shut down completely and them losing any progress or anything like that. Now, whether or not you would charge a maintenance fee really depends depends on how much someone could potentially lose if they were to have their account removed completely. Not all memberships are going to have the sort of functionality and the sort of offering that has such a big pain of disconnect that can justify someone paying a maintenance fee. But, you know, depending on your circumstances, there might be something to consider. Now, of course, one way to remove subscription fatigue is to remove the subscription element entirely. So as an alternative or even as an additional option to a regular ongoing monthly subscription, you could instead offer a longer fixed term period that doesn't automatically recur. So it's a one-off payment for a set period of time. It's not a subscription. And then at the end of that term, if someone wants to remain a member, they then sign up again to extend their membership. Now that may sound counterintuitive. Surely you want to keep people on the hook with a recurring payment. And obviously you would need to have something great in place to re-engage those people around the time of their renewal, to keep them engaged enough to want to continue on after their term expires. But it's certainly a valid way of combating subscription fatigue and the flexibility of offering something like a three-month pass or a one-year pass to your membership could actually attract more members who otherwise might be put off by the idea of a recurring subscription. So not only do you help combat subscription fatigue for your existing members, you also help circumnavigate that for people who haven't yet joined your membership but would be enticed by the idea of buying a fixed-term pass. Now, when people are evaluating the subscriptions they're paying for, any subscriptions that they deem non-essential will, of course, be the first for the chop. So what can you do to make your membership essential. You need to get better at both delivering and communicating the value proposition of your membership. Remember, people don't join a membership at standstill. They join because they have a problem to solve, a goal to achieve, a result that they're looking for. They want to get something out of being a member. So you need to ensure that you are absolutely delivering on those needs. And this isn't about giving people the most stuff. People aren't going to stick around just because you give them more courses than somebody else does. That's not going to be enough to keep them when they start really scrutinizing their subscription payments. Your membership should be delivering a real return and having a legitimate positive impact on the lives of your members. That's where the value comes from and that's where your membership becomes indisposable. But it's not just enough to deliver that value, you need to ensure that your members are aware 
that you're delivering that value, that they're aware of just how important your membership is to them. Encourage them to do things like start a progress log, a journal or a diary inside your community so they actually have a living record of how much your membership is helping them to achieve. Use gamification to reward and to recognize people for making progress. Encourage members to share their success stories with each other. So again, it's bringing the return, it's bringing the value top of mind. It's making people aware of the fact that they're getting something truly, truly valuable from being a part of your membership. It's not enough to just help someone get results. They need to be aware that those results are coming from being part of your membership. That's what makes it essential. So those are my top tips for how membership site owners can combat subscription fatigue. Number one, take steps to try to personalize your member experience. Someone feels a personal connection with you and your membership, they're going to be far less inclined to cancel it when they're reviewing the things they're paying for. If you have multiple subscription products in your business, combining them into a single product, again, that can make it more likely that you'll avoid the chop. You might want to look at it reducing a lower price tier so that if someone is thinking about cancelling, they have the softer option of being able to downgrade. Alternatively, you might give them the ability to pause their account so they can put their subscription on hold until a point where maybe it's more affordable or maybe a point where the overwhelm of all the subscriptions they're paying for has subsided. The easy way to remove subscription fatigue is to remove the subscription element. So consider non-recurring fixed terms. Sell a three-month pass, a six-month pass. Maybe sell credits to your site that can be redeemed for downloads or courses or something like that. Maybe even go pay as you go. So many different options for removing the subscription aspect from what you're doing and ensure that your membership is not only delivering great value to members, making it indisposable, making it essential, but also that you're doing a great job of communicating to your members the value they're receiving and making them realize just how important it is that they remain part of your membership. Okay, that's it for today's episode. Hopefully you found it useful. I'd love to hear from you what your biggest takeaway is. Hit me up on social at Membership Guys or inside our free Facebook group, talkmemberships.com or just punch Membership Mastermind into your Facebook app. That'll take you right to our group. I would love to hear what your top takeaway from today's episode is. That is it. I'm out of here. See you next week. If you've enjoyed today's episode of the Membership Guys podcast, we invite you to check out the membersiteacademy.com. The Member Site Academy is the essential resource for anyone at any stage of starting, growing and running a membership website. So whether you're still figuring out what your idea is going to be or whether your website is already up and running and you're just looking for ways to grow it and attract new members, then the Member Site Academy can help you to get to the next level. With our extensive course library, monthly training, exclusive member-only discounts, perks and tools, and a supportive, active community to help you along the way with feedback, encouragement and advice, the Member Site Academy is the perfect place to be for anyone looking to start, manage and grow a successful membership website. So check it out at membersiteacademy.com.